Hello and welcome to Watch Me Edit. Watch Me Edit is a series where I will edit a raw picture from the very original raw file to the finished picture and take you guys along so you can see how I edit my pictures and maybe get some inspiration or some information off of it. If you are new to Lightroom, I have made a 30 minute in-depth tutorial on how to edit landscapes in Lightroom where I cover everything very thoroughly with a step-by-step -step explanation on what adjustments I usually do to my landscape photos and what each slider does to the image. So if you want to watch that video first, there is a link in the description below or just click on the screen right now. Alright, so let's get started with the editing of this image. This is a shot I took on the Swiss Mountain Riggy. Alright, so first step in my workflow is always to raise the shadows. That looks very nice. Lower the highlights. I think I'm gonna go all the way on both sliders here. Adjust the blacks, put them down a bit, hold down the Alt key to see wherever the blacks clip. Just kinda let go of it and see what looks the best. I think that looks pretty good. The next step is contrast. Play around with the contrast. I really like what it does to the right side of the image. That looks very good. Then I'm gonna bring up the whites. Again, press down the Alt key to see wherever the whites are clipped. I like the blacks. I don't want any highlights clipped here. I'm actually gonna go a few steps below. Then add some clarity. I think that works pretty well. I really like what clarity does to the foreground, but not so much to the background, so I'm gonna add just a little bit to the total image. So I'm gonna straight away take a radiant filter, add it to the foreground here, and add some clarity, and now it just affects the foreground. Beautiful. I think the exposure works pretty well here, so I'm gonna play around with the white balance. I don't think I'm gonna go back to blue, but I'm definitely going to add some orange, just a tiny bit. Tint, play around with the tint a little bit. Mm. I think I'm going to leave it at default here. Alright, so next step is the Vibrance tool. Personally, I like Vibrance way more than Saturation because it adds color more naturally and it looks less fake if you add color that way. But honestly, I don't even think we need any saturation in this picture. Yeah. I'm actually gonna take some out. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of saturation out just because we've done such a heavy editing process already. Alright, so next step is the tone curve. You know, I always like to bring up the highlight slider right here. Other than the highlight slider up there, it just affects the very highlights of the image. The lights, just gonna play around with that. Oh, I like what it does when I bring it up to the foreground. Yeah, definitely. And then darks. I don't think I'm gonna do too much to the darks here. Maybe bring them down slightly. Then shadows. Maybe erase them a little bit just so we get some detail back in the trees there. That looks pretty good. Alright, so next step is the HSL tool. Gonna go to the hue, gonna go to the grass, press on it and pull up the mouse. Bring it up and down and just see what it does to the color of the grass. Hmm, maybe bring the yellow a little bit to the right. Yeah, that adds a little bit more green. I like that. And I'm gonna do the same with the hue on the sky. So it affects the blues. But I don't really like what it does to the blues, so I'm just gonna reset that. Next step, saturation. Gonna do the same on the grass, see what looks best. I think I'm gonna leave it where it was at the start. Same with the sky. Play around. I think I'm actually gonna go negative a little bit here. Just because the blue cast right here, I don't really like that. And it seems like the blues really don't affect any of the greens here in the image. Next step, luminance tool. 
gonna do the same as I've done with the previous HSL tools maybe gonna bring that up a little bit yeah I like that I don't think I'm gonna change too much to the sky let's see here oh actually I like what it does when I bring it back that's up yeah I definitely like that better I'm gonna leave it there don't want it too much Alright, so split toning. Always like to play around with split toning. Give the image some colors. Even though I'm not sure if I want any in this particular photo. Maybe just a little bit of orange so it gives a tiny bit of variation to the picture. Next step is the shadows and split toning. Hmm. I don't think I like any of these, so I'm gonna put it down to zero saturation so it doesn't affect any color in the shadows. Alright, so down to the detail tool, zoom in one to one, and add some sharpening as I do with all of my pictures. Make sure you don't do it too much, because then it starts to look grainy and unnatural. Add some masking so it doesn't sharpen all of the image. Hold down the ALT key. Everything that's white is going to get sharpened. Everything that's black isn't. Go in one to one here again. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. So I've shot this image on 200 ISO really looks very sharp don't think I'm gonna need any noise reduction for this picture so I'm gonna skip that but what I will do to most of my images including that one is bring the color slider to the right and what this will do is get rid of all of the green and purple sensor noise that you especially can see in the shadows while not affecting the color of the total image too much. I don't know how good this will come over on video, but in person, right in front of my monitor, it definitely looks way cleaner with it on. Maybe don't need that much, however. Yeah, I think that looks pretty well. Next step, lens corrections. Always enable lens corrections. Zoom back out. Without. With. Just corrects all of the distortion and gets rid of the veneering at the corners even though I often like to bring them back down because personally I'm really a big fan of veneering. Next step color, remove chromatic aberration, removes all of the chromatic aberration. Just gonna check the high contrast edges up here. There's still a little bit of green chromatic aberration left so I'm gonna increase the green slider by just a bit. Maybe increase the color range it detects. Yeah, that definitely looks better without and with. Definitely is a world of a difference. Zoom back out again. Here at the next module, effects, gonna add some vignetting. Big fan of vignetting. I think that works pretty well here. Make sure that the lower part of the image doesn't look too unnatural. Just somewhere around that. Play around with the midpoints. I think I'm gonna leave it where it was. Alright, so we're almost done with the global adjustments. Going down here to camera calibration. Just play around with the presets a bit. See if there's something I like better or something in it I want to change gonna go through all of them but I think that works the best then gonna play around with the sliders here shadow tint don't think I'm gonna add anything there going to go to red primary just playing around with the sliders actually like what it does when I put the hue to the right of the red yeah around that play around with the saturation don't think gonna add anything there. Next step green primary. Hmm. I actually think yeah I like what it does when I put this to the right as well. I'm gonna leave it there. 
the saturation, playing around with it. Don't think I'm gonna change anything here. Blues. No, not gonna change any blues. And saturation. Mm, maybe we'll bring it a bit down. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Here's without any adjustments on the camera calibration module, and here's with just a tiny bit of difference. Alright, so we're done with the global adjustments, so what I'm gonna do is selective adjustments. Personally, I think this could use a radial filter here, just to bring back the exposure a bit, maybe bring back the clarity a bit. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Actually, there's one thing I don't really like about the sky, and that is the bluish color. So I'm gonna add a gradient filter here, just for the sky, and bring back the saturation just for the sky a tiny bit. So you can see here, before, after. I just don't like the blues in the sky for this particular image. So next thing I'm gonna do is add some more custom vignetting with the adjustment brush tool, feather to 100, bring down the exposure a bit, and just kind of see what looks pretty good. Maybe add some contrast to it as well. Here to the sides, yeah, I definitely like that one. Here as well. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Maybe down here even more. Mm, I'm actually gonna undo that one because I don't really like what it did. And yeah, I'm happy with the amount of vignetting I got here. So you can see the path here and what I often like to do on these paths is just draw a line with the adjustment brush and kind of increase the clarity and exposure just so the line stands out even more. I'm gonna add some more here. Now if I would do this for myself, I would go in one to one and do this very precisely. But since this is only for YouTube, I don't really have to make it that good. Just gonna show it. Increase the exposure a bit. Not too much, however. And clarity. Let's see here. Maybe even add some contrast. Yeah, I think contrast works pretty well. Again, not a huge deal, but it's definitely noticeable. And now to one of the final steps is to add some dodge and burning. Personally, I used the radial filter. You could use the adjustment brush, however you like. If you use the radial filter, however, bring the feather up to 100 and press on invert mask and just kind of drag some radial filters over your image. Right now I'm gonna put some dodging to the dark spots of the image. Again, if you are interested in dodging burning, I've made a separate guide on this as well. The links down in the description below. I'm gonna bring down the exposure here, duplicate the filter, bring it to another dark spot, maybe gonna add some contrast here as well. Yeah, I think I like that one. Gonna bring some more darkness here. Not so much, however. Gonna duplicate another one. Make it a bit smaller. Duplicate that one as well. Just kinda play around with it. To give some more interest in terms of the lights to the picture. I actually think this one right here could use a pretty big one since there's not much interesting stuff over here. Add some contrast. Not too much however. I think that looks pretty good. And now we're gonna do some burning, meaning making individual parts of the image brighter. I'm gonna create a radial filter just like I did before, but this time I'm gonna go plus exposure and plus clarity. I 
think that's a bit too much. That works pretty well. Just duplicate this one here again. Maybe even increase some contrast. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Duplicate it and just play around here a bit more exposure. Another one here. Maybe a long one to those flowers here. I think that works pretty well. Here's without any radial filters. And here's with. Just adds a bit more contrast, a bit more dynamic to the image. It's just icing on the cake without. With. Actually, when I'm looking at this picture for a while, I think it could use a bit of a gradient filter with a negative exposure. Just for the top part. Not that much, just like a tenth of a stop and increase the contrast a tiny bit. Bring up the shadows. Yeah, I like that look. Alright. And now the and now the last step I'm gonna do to all of my images is zoom in one to one to the sky and see if there are any sensor spots or dust spots that I don't want in my picture. Don't seem to find anything here. Maybe I think this could be one. So I'm gonna go into the spot removal tool, make sure I'm on heal, and just select a healing tool that is big enough to cover all of the dirt spot you want to have removed and see if it does a good job. I think that is pretty well. If it doesn't, go ahead and select new source and it will select a new part of the image to fill in. And yeah, we're done. If you liked the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Always helps me out a ton. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions, any feedback or anything to say. Always makes me happy. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would like to see more photography related videos like this. Lightroom edits and Lightroom guides in the future. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day.